Hello everyone, welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Engineer. No, space, what am I playing? Space Exploration, that one. Um, and so, since the last episode, I've discovered that one of the big problems I'm having at the moment is a massive lack of rocket fuel. So this belt here is the one that's bringing it in from where it's made. And as you can see, it's almost completely empty. Oh no, not this one. Um, this one. And as you can see, there's hardly any coming along here. Uh, what there is is being piped into this into this uh, refinery here. That's then passing it off onto this um, this this second silo I built over here. And that's now finally, after a long time, very nearly full. And the reason there's a, such a shortage of the rocket fuel is because there's not a great deal of vulcanite being produced. It's being generated from the core miners down here, but there's not much of it coming through. There's well, that's what quarter of a belt, tenth of a belt, it's very little. It's being loaded into, in, into the station down here and we've got 16,000 so it's not too bad I suppose. Um, and so it is getting brought up here but not in the sort of, not at the, quite at the rate it's needed at. Um, there's still a fair amount here at the moment, probably because the train has just called, called in but yeah there's already a distinct shortage of it. Um, so we're, yeah we are making that into fuel but what, so what I've decided to do um, there are a couple of possible solutions. One is to start making the fuel out of water, which is what's going on in these machines here. Um, it turns out you can turn a little bit of copper and an enormous quantity of water and a huge quantity of time into a rocket fuel. Uh, so this takes 500 seconds to run through and uses a tiny amount of copper and a, a lots and lots of water. And so yeah, I, mean, I, I could set up a massive array of these things. And, and eventually just sort of get get through the uh, the lack of resource, the lack of um, speed on it with just having a sheer number of them. And see, one of these belts is 15 per second. So in order to fill one of these up, I would need about 7,500 of these machines, and that's a crazy amount. So, so yeah, I think I probably won't do that. Um, that just seems a bit ridiculous. So what I've decided to do instead is set up the second rocket here, and I'm going to take this off to another planet where the vulcanite flows freely. So if we have a look at this, we've got two. Basically, I've got two choices out of the planets I've discovered: there's Mayokin and Sakimi. So they seem to be relatively similar. Um, they're both vulcanite and a little bit of beryl and a smattering of other things that I've already heard of. This one's vulcanite, slightly less beryl. There's a lot more uranium here, interestingly. Uh, but the other things I've the other differences they have is this one has a only 80% solar, this one has 112% solar, so I'll need fewer solar plat panels to get the same amount of power I need. Also, this has a 0% threat, whereas this one has a 67% threat, and I believe that refers to the quantity of biters. So if I look at Sakimi, yeah, there's there's biters around. There's not enormous numbers of them, but then there's but, but there is quite a lot of them. Um, and I think this would be rather a difficult place to land. If I try and, if I drop a rocket down here somewhere, then I'm just going to get mobbed by all of the surrounding biters and, and just absolutely wrecked through it. Um, alternatively, if I have a look at my Okin, this one doesn't have any biters, so I can drop in here, pretty much safe, well, completely safely, because there's nothing around here that's going to try and eat me. Uh, it's also got one of these weird pyramid things, and I think I should be able to. I think I'm able to go and explore inside those. So I'm curious to find out about that. And we've got iron ore, we've got some stone, we've got a big patch of vulcanite here, we've got some beryl up here. So there's all these things I wanted to explore and investigate and around. And um, yeah, this looks like a much better place to go. So what I've done is I've loaded this rocket up in the same sort of way as ever, as before with the other ones, with all the things I I might possibly need. Um, this one I've done mostly through requester chests basically because I'm lazy and I don't and it's all sort of this one all the stuff a lot of the stuff I needed was being built nearby like all these all these weird space conveyances and things like that um, or were already on the bus like the um, circuits and things or were needed in huge quantities like the re research packs so I've, I've, uh, so that made sense to do by um, belt but this one it, it's smaller quantities yes I'm gonna get through a lot of the belts and the and, and things I'm gonna have quite a lot of them in here so, I admit it's only 400 so far, that's not going to be remotely enough. Let's um, let's increase that a bit before we go anywhere. Make that minus a thousand. There we go. And that'll, it'll load a load more in now. Um, so, 
yeah, I've, I've loaded up this this rocket with all the sort of things I'm going to need. We've got some basic belts and things to build out the area I'm going to want to explore. Uh, we've got some inserters and we've got some bots to do the building work for us. I've even put in some um, various military things. There's a load of ammunition and some shells, and, and this, this, these were all to build. The ammunition was going to go in the turrets uh, and then have them as a perimeter around the base in much the same way I've done down here on Norvis. And then the explosives and shells and radars were to make artillery shells that I put in, this, uh, in these artillery wagons and use them just to clear the bat biters back a bit and give me some breathing room. Uh, that's not going to be necessary on uh, Myokin because there aren't any biters there, but uh, I've loaded the rocket. I can't be bothered to switch it around, and there, it's all fairly cheap stuff, really. There's a load of um, cargo rocket, packed cargo rocket sections, and those will enable me to get back from where from the uh, from the planet by building a rocket. And I've got in my inventory, I've got a cargo rocket silo, another capsule, uh, communication things, uh, fuel refineries, basically the other things that I'm going to need to get back. So I don't want to get myself stranded on this other planet. Fuel shouldn't be a problem because the whole reason I'm going there is to get the fuel. And so I've got things like pulverizers and and whatnots and some um, turbines and things in order to turn all of the um, the fuel in the, the vulcanite into um, pr processed fuel. Now I've had a look at the um, the ratios, and I've decided the best thing to bring back from this planet is uh, is these things, these cubes of vulcanite, because they stack much much higher than the fuel, than rocket fuel. Rocket fuel stacks to ten per slot. Um, and that means you can't can't really carry all that much of it. Whereas the vulcanite cubes stack to 100, although it does take 80 to make a, um, a rocket fuel. 80? It takes 8 to make a rocket fuel. To bring back to bring it back as the the cubes is going to be significantly more efficient. So yeah, that's um, that's my plan. Go over there, set up a bit of a base for that sort of thing. The other thing I've built up recently is these things along here so these are the, these this is a, um, a another massive gun looks a lot like the asteroid defense one but this one's green and that can be used to load up stuff into pods and then fire it back towards the, your home planet um in basically a very large cannon shell uh, and then you have these special boxes for catching them and these pods are the things you actually load up so the idea is i've, I've grabbed some i've got 41 in my inventory so i can use these capsules to bring stuff back i also need to put down um a delivery cannon chest around here somewhere to catch it uh, so let's before I go let's head down and do that um, and then I can sort of test fire I can do test fires without having to worry too much and it's these that are going to be coming out of it so if I put it down here that's smaller than I was expecting okay we can put this in here and then we can feed from both supplies into, into onto these belts and um, and use and use it for both both sources. I don't know which one I should prioritise really, but uh, we'll 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 see how it goes. What I'm then going to do is also set up a transmitter next to this. The idea with this being that I can send if I, if I wire it up properly, I can I can send a signal from this to the um, uh, to the to wherever it's coming from to say how much is in the chest. Uh, I want to put this on channel 3, I think. There we go. Um, right, so so this this will tell this will tell it how much is in the chest, and as long as there's less than one capsule's worth, um, as long as there's more than one capsule's worth of space left, then I can then I can fire another capsule down. Uh, so that should work. That should be I should be able to link that up and have have that work. The alternative, of course, is to send is to ship everything back in rockets, but that's going to be a much bigger um, much much bigger job, uh, much more expensive rather, because you require all the, all the parts from the rockets. The only downside of this is I'm going to need to take over enough of these capsules to keep the kit delivery cannon running, um, and that's something that I, I may be able to make on site. I've got nearly 100, and that'll probably do. I may be able to make on site in the future, but at the moment I'm not going to even try that. So what I've been doing is I've been waiting for this to fuel up. It is now fueled up. Good. So I guess this is it. It's time to go. Oh, actually, let's launch this one as well, because... So, the other thing that's been happening... If I look back up in Norvis Orbit... I've run out of lots of the science packs up here, so my research has ground to a halt. I've got loads of the um, these ones, the rocket science, but I've run out completely of the uh, the red, the blue, and the green, and... Grey? Yes, so, there's, yeah, there's a bit of distinct shortage of those. So, I've got this rocket filled up again. And now that all the, then there's enough fuel in this one, I don't feel bad about launching this one. So... Uh, 
yeah, how, how full is it? That's that's pretty full, actually. There's a few other things I'm sending back up there as well, because I brought them down by mistake. Um, but basically, this is using the uh, the system I was talking about in previous episodes, where the uh, the transmission of the signal down from from orbit tells it how much stuff it's missing, and that can all be loaded in and then uh, and then launched uh, like this. So we'll send that one. Off. And while that's launching, I can come over here, hop into my second rocket. Set up into my second rocket. There we go. And this one's much less full, but I don't think I need quite as much stuff for this, this mission. So I'm going to... Oh, great. <laughs> My rocket's... Oh, no. What does that mean? Okay, it's crashed over here. That's not so bad, I guess. Um, hmm. Luckily, it's happened within Roboport range. Um... Some of it's in RoboPort range. Okay, can I put another one of these in over here? It's done a load of damage to my base up here, which is quite annoying. Um, but other than that... Mm, there we go. I don't know if there are actually any of these RoboPorts up there. <laughs> hmm. So, let's see. I'm, I was aware that this was a thing that could happen. Um, I'm just, well, I guess I've been lucky that it hasn't happened so far, and maybe I'm lucky that it didn't happen when I was on it. Or maybe I'm actually unlucky that it didn't happen when I was, wasn't on, unlucky that it happened when I wasn't on it, because if I'd gone up there, then I'd be able to have supervised this clean-up a bit more um, directly and, my, by my, um, and myself and, uh, and organise things a bit better. But I think what I'm going to do is just leave the, leave the robots to get on with that. I don't think there is... A, um, a robot port that's going to get placed there, unfortunately, because that just... Oh, I could... Oh, maybe I... Oh, I don't know. No, I don't seem to have any robot ports, so that's... That's a pain. Um, I could deconstruct this one on the end. That's probably my best bet. Because I think I feel like I want to do this. I want to have this... Um, I need to have this robot port here and clear all this up, because we're going to be getting... As you can see here, a lot of stuff loaded into the um, loaded into the new rocket that hasn't been built yet, and a lot of this is stuff that is already up there and is just lying around on the floor. So we're going to end up with a bit more of some of these things than we really wanted. Um, but never mind. I don't know if there's much I can do about it. I think I'm going to not worry about that too much for now and just let the, let that sort of tidy itself up. Um, and go back to what I was going to do before. So, let's head off to... Um, I've forgotten what the planet's called already. To other place. Mjokin. There we go. Let's head off to Mjokin and have, have a look around there. As you can see, the, uh, the new rocket is being built in there already. Uh, but that's probably a good thing, because these are ex exploration rockets. So I'm going to use basically the same thing go somewhere else eventually. Landing successful kind of. Oh, I didn't bring a um a what do you call it? Um a big warehouse to put all this stuff in. Still, never mind. Um is this where we want to start building? I think it probably is. I know ideally I want to be close to yeah, okay, there's a nice big vulcanite patch. Okay, that's so it probably is quite a good place because I want to be relatively close to the um, rockets crash landing crash landing point so that they can get the bots to tidy stuff up for me. So let's put one of these down here. Now obviously that's not going to have any power, but one of these crates, yes, should have a load of solar panels in it. Um, now if I have a look at Norvis, I've got I've already made and spec'd up a. Um, yeah, like this. This sort, this sort of arrangement of solar panels, which I think is a good ratio for keeping power running, essentially, uh, because you've got you've got the solar panels for power, for power, obviously, and you've got the there we go, and you've got the accumulators to keep the lights on overnight, essentially. So we'll do that. So uh, the first ones of these I'll have to put down manually, of course. Ideally in the right place. Oh, okay, just like that. <laughs> oh, right. 
Um, and I need some accumulators as well. Are they in the same? No, they're not in there. Is it currently? Yes, it's currently night time because my torch is on. But I think the sun is, is rising now. Yes, that's now got power. So we're, we're starting to get some output. Maybe we're not. Anyway, the construction bots will start doing some of the uh, clear up. And if I put down one of these chests, actually, I'm going to need some more, more than one of those chests. Thankfully, I do have did bring the supplies to build them. I feel like I might have been a little bit short-sighted on some of the storage things I'm going to need. Uh, but never mind, we'll, we'll see how we get on. Okay, this is going to take a while, so um, I shall report back later. Sometime later... I've done some building. I've realised I've made a few mistakes, but some progress has been made. So I've got myself a little... Um, mining outpost over here on this massive vulcanite patch um, but because I am apparently an idiot I didn't bring remotely enough miners or remotely enough power poles with me so this is all being a little bit of a struggle um, I've had to sort of scrounge up some steel I've had a little bit of steel so I've had to make a few extra ones but that sort of worked um, but they're feeding down this fairly long belt to these um, these pulverizers which are working absolutely fine then into these chemical plants which it turns out need water as well. I completely forgot that um, refining uh, vulcanite required water, so I haven't brought any of that up with me, which is a bit of a problem. <laughs> um, because without that, I can't. Without any water, I can't make any rocket fuel, and without that, I can't get back home. Um, I've carried on sort of sketching this out a bit though, so I've got a nice big bank of uh, assembly machines here that will turn the turn the in, um, the crushed vulcanite into these cubes, and then pass it down here where it can be put into this delivery cannon here and into this chemical plant, uh, sorry, fuel refinery to be made into fuel for my rocket. The rocket is built. I've, um, if I go out of map mode, there we go. Rocket is built. I've got the uh, the hundred uh, rocket sections and this capsule on the top of it. I haven't put any cargo in it yet because I haven't needed it, needed to. There's nothing I've needed to, need to take with me at this point. And there's obviously no fuel in it. Um, I'm going to want it to go to Norvis. There we go. It doesn't need a huge amount of fuel, actually. This is obviously a much smaller planet, so it's easier to get take off from. Um, but e either way, I'm going to need to um, have have some rocket fuel to get to get away from here. The um, this again, I've got I've got the the pods I brought with me. I put into this chest here, so they can be automatically loaded into it. And as the as the vulcanite block becomes available, it'll it'll fill it up and then eventually start firing them. Um, oh no, here we go. There is a way to have, set up how to do it. Delivery cannon. So I'm going to want to go to Norvis. Ah, and I now need to choose where I put my drop-off crate. Where did I put my drop-off crate? Oh, it was down here with all the rest of the... There we go, into there. Okay, so presumably if I switch that to on, it'll start firing. Also, presumably, I can wire it into my receiver, wherever that is. Um, I've obviously not put it down yet, and then and then have a have a thing set up so, so it'll fire at the right time when the when the thing at the other end is um, is ready for it. So let's see which one, where's the receiver transmitter receiver. If I put that in here, there's a lot of rocks on this planet. Put that in here, and then link it up like so. Oh, okay. I might have to do it via that then. In that case, I was hoping I'd be able to use this to turn it on and off, um, based on what was it, what what signal I was receiving. Um, currently receiving. Oh, it's on the wrong network. That's why. I don't think I want to be on three. It's currently not receiving anything, so that might be right. Uh, let's have a quick look. Novice. Yes, that's transmitting on three. Okay, so those are good. Those are, those are matching. So basically, I want to say if this is less than a certain amount, then then launch them. If it's more than a certain amount, then don't, and that'll keep this this running. Because as you can see, the um, the vulcanite has run out again because I'm waiting for another train to bring a load in um, after the core miners have mined it. <clears throat> a more immediate problem is going to be with the the water, though, as I said. So let's come over here. What I plan to do is put that in there. Fortunately, I can pro I can get the bots to do all of this from well wherever basically. So I should be able to get a delivery cannon placed in here and then load it up from that. Uh, this is going to be let's see. So I'm also going to need a requester chest and 
wonder where a delivery cannon is going to be. Maybe in here. Here? Yeah, it's a logistics thing. There you go. Delivery cannon. So that goes there. Good. There is room for it. And we're going to need um, inserters here. So we want a filter inserter there. So it can pull from the... So it can pull... Just pull the water barrels across. And a normal inserter here will do as well. So... And power. Like that. Now here we go. The bots will come in and build all this up for me. And that should then start to work. So I need to now set this to fire at Myokin. And the location for it to fire at is... I thought I put in a receiver. Okay, we'll come back to that. I want you to launch water barrels. So there is here, there's a limit to what you can send by um, by interstellar railgun. Um, <laughs> bricks. It's basically, it's basically resources and slightly, ref mal slightly refined things. So things that are reasonably tough and can survive the abuse. And explosives as well, apparently. Um, so there's not going to be any sending of electronic engines or miners or anything like that. Any of the other, or pylons, any of the other things I've forgotten. But I could get it to send steel over if I linked everything up appropriately. Hopefully, I've, I think... I brought an... Oh, I'm still in funny mode. There we go. I think I brought... Yes, I did bring another of these chests over. Thank goodness for that. Uh, so if I put that... Oh, I don't know how much I need to spread these things out. Let's put it down here. Uh, in fact, let's put it right down here, out of the way. I don't know whether there's a decent chance of things missing or not, but I think I, I want to put it... No, not I. You. Uh, I think I want to have it a little bit out of the way, just in case. Right, so I want you to fire at that. Turned on. Uh, if we go back to Norvis. Still isn't finished. Because I need I need to program this and and this to, in order to tell it what, what to do, but things are getting brought up from quite a long way away, so it's taking a little while. <laughs> okay, you are to hand over water barrels. You Oh, to, oh yes, to make water barrel delivery. Oh, I don't need that. Didn't need to be a stack inserter because it's configured by by this thing as what it needs to load across. Oh well, never mind. And you, I want to summon delivery pods, but probably only five at a time. There we go. Okay. So now this is good. This is just waiting for a delivery cannon capsule. That should come over fairly quickly because yes, it doesn't have to go all that far. That is now as good as ready. I'm assuming when I turn this on, it's going to fire them. Let's find out. Right. Um, that was good, I think. Now, yes, great success. We've got... Okay, I was expecting more than that, but... Um, that's okay, I guess. So now we need to have pa pass these into a into an assembly machine, which will detank them. Um, this one, and I can put it straight into. Do I have? Did I bring it? Yes, I did bring liquid tanks. Oh, thank goodness for that. I have a couple of those to fill it up with. And I'm then going to need to pass them off into... Let's put them in a provider chest since I've got so many of them. Okay, like that. And then we need one of these as well. Right, okay, we now have water. So I'm going to now get, go back over to um, sort of setting setting all of this up. So, um, yeah, I think, that's, I think that's probably a good point to stop this episode. Uh, thank you for watching, I'll see you. And I'll uh, see you next time when hopefully I'll be able to get off this um, barren, ra waste, barren wasteland of a planet that's just... I mean, it's kind of featureless really, isn't it? It's just... <laughs> there's red pa patches of red ground and patches of grey ground and some little patches of resources scattered around. But basically, yeah, there's not much up here. So well, I'm looking forward to getting back to Norvis with massive quantities of supplies. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time when hopefully that'll all be up and running. <laughs>